What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my analysis of the new Christmas and Winter units. So we have got Christmas Black Knight as our axe armor and this is just absolutely amazing because I really like Black Knight and his voice acting in Faye and of course it was given that he was going to be in the banner or at least Zelgius from the silhouette that we saw. So he's an axe armor this time with Solom Axe as his preferred weapon. So this weapon gives him minus on special cooldown and plus 5 to all of his stats in the combat. And then he can get a bunch of effects if his own attacks can trigger his own special. And that is going to be depending on foe's HP at start of that combat. So the wording of this weapon is extremely important because he wants to run specials that trigger on his own attacks like Black Luna and all of the offensive specials and this does not include the defensive specials which trigger on the enemy's attacks like Aegis, Pavis. So he's definitely incentivized to run Black Luna with Special Fighter 4 than running any kind of defensive special with Hardy Fighter unless you just want to get rid of a lot of the effects that he can get. Um, so he can definitely get a lot of effects which is going to be really helping him against the full HP enemies that he's going to be ideally facing. So if his opponent is at 60 HP or above then he can get the full null follow up out of this weapon which is really good because he doesn't really have to run Savvy Fighter. And if his enemy's HP is at 40% or above, then he can get attack and speed debuffs on the opponent depending on 25% of their attack stat subtracted by 8. And this can go all the way up to 10. So he can get really fast with the speed debuffs here, especially against a lot of the hard hitting opponents uh, like Brave Zella, for example, or Asker, or many of the other units which have pretty high attack stat. And finally, if his enemy's HP is at 20% or more, then he can get the damage reduction on foe's first attack by 40%. So he has got the inbuilt damage reduction, null follow up, and also a lot of speed debuffs which can definitely help him function as a speedy armor and he does have black luna of course i'm kind of surprised that they didn't make like black luna plus which has got like damage reduction piercing because that is still going to be uh one of the obstructions for this kind of black knight uh because damage reduction skills are still going to be stopping the full damage out of black luna he has got distant dart and then he has got special fighter 4 so the tier 4 version of the special fighter skill has a bit better hp threshold it can give you these special charges on both your attacks and the enemy's attacks and also give you guard in both phases. So it's definitely pretty good for a speedy armor like him who can function in both phases. And then the tier 4 version now pretty much takes some inspiration from, you know, Brave Claude's Weapon Refine to reduce the effect of Deep Wound's status by 50%. And if a unit deals damage to the foe using a offensive special, then they can restore 30% of their HP depending on the damage dealt. This does not include the AoE specials of course, you're not going to be getting any kind of healing on that. So Special Fighter 4 is a decent upgrade I suppose, but it's not the most insane. I would have definitely preferred having Null Guard on the Special Fighter 4 so that the special acceleration is a bit better. Um, because guard status is very detrimental to Black Knight and especially like any kind of foe with a tempo effect which can completely disable the primary effects of special fighter um, and you're not going to be getting any kind of healing when you don't trigger any kind of special. And Black Luna can definitely be a pretty amazing way of killing so not triggering that is going to be a bit annoying. So definitely watch out for the guard effects and he does have defense resistance far save as a slotsy skill. So overall I think that this Black Knight is definitely going to be a pretty good you know, near save unit because of having this kind of speed. Even though he does have the weapon strangle disadvantage against someone like Brave Salif or Legendary Nana, I do think that he can get fast enough uh, to kind of you know, speed check them and in many cases also kill them if he's going to be fast enough. But you definitely need to stack up a lot of speed on him. Um, green armors are definitely in a bit of a pickle when it comes to functioning as a far safe unit because we have duochrome who's omnipresent and pretty much all competitive game modes in the higher echelons of the gameplay so if you are going to be using black knight as your far savior then duochrome is just going to be slaying him um and he will not be able to survive even if you run like sylvall and shield or something like that because dead eye of duochrome is simply going to be doing too much damage um so that is definitely a bit worrisome if you are going to be using him with this base kit so you can definitely change his build, especially if you're competitive, uh, for more of a near safe build. And the brave hits are going to be a bit annoying because he doesn't really get the damage reduction on the second hit. Uh, so speedy armors are always going to be, uh, you know, having that kind of uh, dilemma where they don't really have the raw bulk to take the brave hits many times, even if they have got the damage reduction. 
So definitely watch out for that as well. But overall, I think that he's going to be a pretty solid armor unit. And I'm pretty happy uh, that he got an alt here. Um, he just looks so amazing with an axe. So I think that he's going to be pretty fast actually with this kind of uh, build. He's uh, probably going to be having pretty good attack stat as well and, and kind of a mixed box. So he can, you know, technically take hits on both spectrums. But like I explained before, he does work a bit better as a near safe unit than he does as a far save right out of the box. We've got Amazing Dorothea as a Red Mage Cavalry Refresher. So she does have access to Sing and it's not like a preferred Sing, but still her weapon is pretty supportive in nature. So she has got sevenfold gifts. Uh, which does have all of the gifts of the Black Eagle students. So it is definitely really good aesthetically. And this weapon provides her with plus 3 speed. And if she uses Sing, then she can grant the plus 6 Spectrum buff to the target ally and also the player phase guaranteed follow up attack. So this player phase guaranteed follow up attack has been seen before on August on Future Vision 2 of Legendary Lucina, on Divine Fang, uh, plus on Naga. So this is pretty much that kind of follow up attack. And this can definitely give a player phase to a lot of these lower units. And for the faster units, this can act as a pseudo half null follow up to get past the follow up negation effect. So it can be useful. And then she can get plus six attack and speed in the combat. There's also Harmonic Azura, who is also really good, providing that plus one movement. And your mileage is going to be varying depending on your team composition, but a lot of times people are going to be preferring Harmonic Azura for that plus one movement, so they can just be a lot more offensive with their uh, units and also give the buffs to many of the allies at the same time uh, when refreshing with her compared to Dorothea, who only gives the visible buffs to the target ally. She also has Speed Resistance Fall Trace and Infantry Speed Tactic. So Infantry Speed Tactic is just a wonderful support skill that could be run on any kind of non-infantry support unit. And this is going to be really good because it can free up the Null Follow-Up Slobby skill or Null Follow-Up uh, Secret Seal of many of the infantry units. And this is going to be really good with a lot of the... Uh, you know, stacked builds that want to have a uh, bulwark skill or like special spiral 4 and they don't really want to run null follow up in their sacred seal. So this is definitely going to be a really good supportive skill and also she's going to be amazing as a fodder because of it. So here she's going to be taking out the green mage uh, with this really amazing animation. And I think that she is going to be having pretty good attack stat and also she's going to be pretty fast. So offensively, like she is going to be a bit better than Harmonic Azura. But then again, a refresher is primarily going to be used for their support. Um, and she's obviously not going to be having very high bulk because the dancer penalty and being a ranged unit and everything. So not the highest of BST, but her support is definitely going to be useful for many people. And then we move on to the four star focus unit of this banner. And that is going to be... Winter Annette. Where is Winter Mercedes? I'm still looking for her. I cannot find her. I thought Mercedes would be anywhere where Annette is, but let's hope that we can get her next time. So here Annette is present as a colorless bow armor and uh, she is uh, gonna be functioning as a pretty nice four star focus unit for the people who want to plus and merge her and her inheritable weapon is actually pretty nice because it's just a much better instant bow because you can get the impact effect or the follow up negation effect in both phases so it's not really limited to the player phase like the impact bow and it also provides you with the attack and speed debuff on the enemy. So it is going to be a pretty good inheritable bow on many of these slow units. Um, and this can provide you with the follow up negation effect which is really useful as an armor tank. She also has Moonbow and Attack Res Ideal 3. And then finally she has got Crafty Fighter 3 as a 4 star focus. So Crafty Fighter um, is going to be giving you the guard effect which is going to be helping with a slow unit like a net. And I don't really think that she's going to be very fast this time around. Um, because uh, she's getting doubled here by this green mage. So I do think that she's going to be pretty slow. Um, but that does mean that she's going to be having really excellent mixed bulk. So if you're going to be trying to plus and merge her, then the merges are definitely going to be helping you uh, with the bulk as it does with any kind of tank. Um, and she's also going to be having pretty good attack stat, I think, at like base 43. So overall, she can function as a good merge project, but... Um, like a lot of the range armor units, she's not going to be having access to the defensive specials or hardy fighter. Um, and she cannot really make use of savvy fighter that much because she's not fast. So she is going to be uh, lacking some of the things which a lot of top tier save units have. 
Um, and it's gonna be hard for range armor units in general unless you're someone like Winter Marth with insane speed preempt and like <laughs> enemy phase dive bomb. So Winter Annette is gonna be having those problems, but she is gonna be pretty bulky. And you know, she can function as a pretty good uh, alternative to like Valentine Fey type of unit who's really bulky as a far safe tank. But keep in mind that many of the offensive threats are still going to be annoying, especially if they have wound sweep, because Annette is going to be slower, so she is going to be a bit susceptible to that. Um, but overall, I'd really find her nice as a four star focus. And the final unit of this banner is definitely going to be Harmonic Cordelia with her daughter, Selena. So this is kind of like uh, the Tellius Harmonic unit that we had with Winter Altina and Sanaki. So Cordelia is present here as a Lance Flyer, which should not be surprising. And both of these have the same voice actress, which is the first for any kind of harmonic or duo unit. So she pretty much talked to herself when recording the voice lines for this unit, uh, which I find so, so amusing. I just cannot wait for the conversation. So here we have got uh, Inseverable Spear. So this weapon does give her minus one special cooldown and it also provides her with plus six attack and speed in the combat and also special charges plus one on both her attacks and the enemy's attacks which means that she's going to be amazing user of gale force or even you know luna by running that as a two cooldown special and the biggest thing out of this weapon is going to be the fact that cordelia can provide herself and the allies within two spaces the orders buff and the dual strike status effect so we are already familiar with the Otter's effect, which was present on Bradal Catria. And speaking of Bradal Catria, Dual Strike is pretty much like Triangle Attack, where it gives you the Brave effect, but its condition is different. So you only need to have one ally to get the Brave effect, but you need to be adjacent to them. Compare this to Bradal Catria's Triangle Attack, where you do need two allies within two spaces to get the Brave hits. Now. When I glanced over this, I kind of thought this might be better than Bridal Catria, but critically thinking a bit more on it, I feel like she is, you know, a side grade to Bridal Catria. I think that Bridal Catria is still going to be useful in Aetherate's defense, while Cordelia, uh, you know, is just much better for Aetherate's offense or for maybe Summoner Duel's S. So the dual strike is going to be helpful because you can just have one ally beside you and you can get the brave effect. So that is perfect for a Gale Force team that uses Wings of Mercy. And being a Gale Force connoisseur, uh, that is going to be a huge, huge thing because you don't really need to teleport with two units to get the brave effect like you have to do uh, with, you know, Bridal Catria. Um, so if you don't really have Bridal Catria, then this unit is definitely going to be a pretty good unit to have because at the end of the day, even if um, you know, she is kind of like a side grade of Bridal Catria. Bridal Catria is still an incredibly powerful unit. So, <laughs> you know, being a side grade to such a powerful unit is definitely not a bad thing. Now, that is definitely some overlap in the unit design in terms of her weapon. But this is going to be a bit different where she is going to be shining a lot more in Aetherate's offense. Um, like I said, with the Gale Force team. Uh, while Bridal Catria is still going to be doing fine. And even Cordelia could be used in Aetherate's defense, honestly. Um, with the dual strike because you can just try and resistance stack on her if you're going to be facing Elamines. Um, and she does have same resistance as Bridal Catria pretty much. Um, and she's of course going to be better than her in some of these situations because she can nuke really hard with the special acceleration or even function much easily as a Gale Force unit. And in Summoner Duel says, if you do play competitively, then uh, yeah, she's going to be a pretty useful tank buster with that Brave Hits if the enemy forgets to ban her and just bans your Bridal Catria team. So she does have the Clash Force skill, Flow Guard, and Defense Res Hold. So Defense Res Hold is interesting because she does not have any kind of like adaptive damage but still this is going to be just a support uh to her allies and especially to the allies who are just going to be adjacent to her and they are going to be getting the advantage out of the whole skill so it can still be a useful skill even though it might seem a bit weird at first so that is a uh, harmonic cordelia definitely a pretty strong unit and she does have her harmonic skill which is definitely going to be applied to a lot of the Awakening and Fates units which are definitely pretty good and very powerful. So this does provide you with plus 6 attack and speed buff and resonance blades and also treachery. So treachery is basically an upgrade of blade tome effect where you get the true damage based on the visible buffs on your unit. And she does provide the plus 6 attack and speed buff with the skill. Um, so already you can get some true damage right off the bat. So definitely a pretty solid harmonic skill here. Uh, Bridal Catria skill is still, you know, useful in my opinion. And it has definitely won me many games many times in like the end game of Summoner Duels. 
Um, but yeah, this skill is also good for the damage output that he can, you know, get out of treachery and also the visible buffs that he can get. Overall, this banner is pretty decent, but I wouldn't really say that it's a must pull if you're not too, like, competitive. Um, but if you're competitive, then you can still get use out of these units because even if, like, they are side grades and if you already have units who can do a similar role, they're still gonna be good units in their own right. And that also goes for the people who like any of these characters and if they do have the orbs to spare. Um, because this banner is gonna be having up to three sparks, like the Christmas banners that we have got. So that is gonna be really helpful. The multiple sparks is definitely something I like a lot because it guarantees the favorite unit that you're trying to pull and you don't really have to pray for the luck to show up. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a pretty nice thing. Even non fate pass users are gonna be able to spark, uh, which is not really possible on the usual seasonal banners. And the free unit that we're going to be getting from this banner is going to be Winter Bruno as a Green Mage Armor. His weapon Peppy Cane Plus is really similar to Annette's weapon where it does have the follow up negation and can provide the attack and resistance debuff in combat on foe in the case of Bruno. And his skills are not really insane for fodder. I mean, Fury 3 <laughs> in 2022 is not the best when we do have, you know, other Fury fodder. Um, but he can definitely change his kit, especially if you like him a lot. And he could function as a good bulky red mage uh, armor tank. I'll definitely go in depth when we get his stats. And as for the sacred seals that his Tempest Trial brings, we have finally, finally got Guard 3, which we can run now. Even though its threshold is uh, not really best, I'm still really glad to finally have the sacred seal. And then we also have spur attack defense too. So overall, I really like the characters in this Christmas banner. Um, you know, Christmas Black Knight is just absolutely amazing. And, you know, Harmonic Cordelia is definitely something I wanted. And her conversation is definitely going to be something I will be looking forward to. And Annette definitely makes me hopeful for a Winter Mercedes, hopefully next year. And Winter Bruno is going to be busting open his shirts as always. So let me know in the comments what you think about this banner and if you're going to be pulling or not. Make sure to share this video with your friends if they are trying to pull on this banner. And if you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below as well. And for more fave videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as me when I found out that there was no Mercedes to accompany Winter Annette. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.